Hey everyone, welcome to Vancouver Island Bushcraft. I'm at the bivouac and I haven't been here for quite a while and we had a big snow dump and major amount of uh, rain so this is the condition of it. <laughs> Not much left of it. I, uh, I've already cleaned out all around here because all of these sticks of course were from the secondary area and uh, the main tarp is down. So I just put a ridge line up here. I'm going to reattach the, uh, the tarp, see what condition it's in, and uh, go from there. But uh, a lot of damage. Basically it's been uh, out in the wilderness other than where the bed is. It's totally covered, which is great. But you can see there's rips from the, uh, the weight of the, uh, from the weight of the, um, of the snow uh, pretty much everywhere. So I'm going to have to jury rig something. I'll double up uh, the uh, tarp so they have the single um, covering, not the double covering uh, for now, and uh, go from there. So a little bit of work ahead of me. All right, I got her all fixed up, I think. Really windy out here right now. A um, little concerned about uh, falling debris. Um, not much I can do about it, I'm here now. Um, so this is the bivouac here, she's all fixed up. I'll back up so you can see. She's all good to go. <clears throat> I uh, used the tarp that usually goes to the side and brought it around the top because there is a hole right there. So I just brought that around. Just in case it rains, it's not supposed to rain. Um, all these tarps are gonna have to be replaced, obviously. Uh, as you can see, there's a hole right there. Um, that's not gonna affect anything. If it rains, it's actually just over the top of the fire. Got the tripod and the chain all set up for the fire area. The sleeping area is all done. Um, I had to raise those pieces of wood. Uh, last time I was sleeping here, it was down and it kept sliding down. So I put another piece of wood there, got that all done. Um, I didn't rebuild, I'll just back up here. I'm, I'm actually in the bivouac right now, as you can see, and I didn't rebuild the secondary um, section. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna actually rebuild this bivouac this summer uh, with, um, with logs. You can see the, uh, the ease of repair when it comes to having um, a shelter with a minimum skeleton and tarps, but you can also see the downfall is um, with heavy snow or heavy winds. Uh, the tarps are of course at the whim of nature and um, can, can definitely fail on you. So um, yeah, that's just a give and take. Um, I prefer to have the, the tarps the way they are and then just repair anything. It took about 45 minutes to repair everything. I was good to go. Um, I think in the uh, in the summer I'm going to do um, almost complete wood um, on it. So um, uh, there will be a really heavy duty skeleton, almost log cabin style. As you can see, there's no need for me to collect firewood. All this wood was um, from the secondary part of the bivouac and I'll just chop that up and have um, uh, fire. I'll show you the stream. It is over the bank. I don't know if you can see that. It's pretty sunny. That is my beer. That's not garbage. And you can see the, uh, it's just over the, almost over the, um, the bridge. And this is about three days after the torrential rain that we had. Uh, there's flooding everywhere. So my guess is that almost everywhere here had water. Other than the bivouac itself, the bivouac is on about three feet high of a, of a, of a embankment, I guess. So the water would never reach that, but it was probably surrounded uh, by water. So I'm gonna uh, chop up some wood and uh, do maybe a couple more little repairs on the, uh, the bivouac. I got, uh, I think it's about two o'clock now. I got about uh, four hours-ish of light and I should have no problem with uh, doing everything I need to do and maybe even having a little bit of a relaxation time. Wasn't planning on rebuilding the bivouac, so uh, that was a uh, 45 minutes to an hour or whatever of, um, of work that I wasn't planning on doing, but that's all part of it. Um, the gear that I brought is uh, pretty much standard gear. Uh, got the, uh, the SKS pot uh, seat cushion. Um, I got the uh, Schmog, the Grail, gun, lighting, a couple of jackets, um, 
cooking stuff. It's the same cooking stuff that I normally bring. I always double up on on uh, pots and kettles and frying pans and that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of people say that that's too much, but they all fit inside each other and uh, it adds a pound and you got all the cooking utensils you want and I've mentioned that before. Um, and the one thing that I want to also mention is um, the pack that I brought, if the bivouac was completely destroyed and I had to abandon it, I have everything here that I need to just go off into the woods and create um, a shelter. Um, I got this, um, this um, tarp here. It's uh, 10 by 12, very, very thin. Uh, and it actually fits inside the pack, which is nice. Uh, everything that I need, I would need for, um, I got all the lashings I could possibly imagine. I got 200 foot uh, things of um, paracord. I even got the tripod here, the, the one you put together. Yeah, it's cheating, but whatever. Um, so I would have everything. It would just be a matter of this is just not repairable. Head off into the woods and um, and build a shelter uh, from scratch. So it's always good to make sure when you go out to a pre-made shelter that you have the ability to make and stay at a shelter without um, without too much issue. Um, that's about it for now. Uh, I'm going to cut some wood and yeah, try to relax. All right. I am relaxing by the stream, as you can see. And just about to have a beer. This one is called The Big One. Longwood Brewery here in Vancouver Island. For hundreds of years, Pressure has been building for brewmasters to perfect the art of India Pale Ale, a tenacious brew fortified with extra hops to withstand adventures of seismic proportions. All right. That sounds pretty good. Seismic proportions. Yep, that's pretty good. Little bit of a bitter taste, but it is a strong beer. It has 6.5% uh, alcohol, so it's a stronger than normal beer. Excellent. I can't think of a better place to have a nice beer next to this stream. The wind is pretty high, but it's nice and sunny. It's all is good. Okay, so it's around five o'clock, it's getting dark. Hopefully you can see me okay. Got uh, some wood all cut up, ready to go for tonight. That should be enough for the night, I think. And uh, I'm gonna start a fire. So I'm gonna use fat wood, obviously. I got the base, because this is really wet. And um, got uh, fat wood all um, uh, shaved. And then, of course, the shavings themselves for, um, for the ferro rod. And then I got small pieces of fat wood. And once all that's good to go, then uh, the large pieces can just go on without any issue. So let's take a look at this and get her going. It's gonna open up the old tripod here. All right. So grab my ferrule rod. Take much to get it going with the all fat wood, that's for sure. <clears throat> Let's move this over here. And this is all fat wood shaving, so <laughs> there's no possibility of this going out, obviously. And I'll let you take a look at this. It just ignites like gasoline. And I'll put the rest of the uh, fat wood on and we got ourselves a fire. All right, so I decided to go TP style just for no particular reason because I normally do the uh, 
log cabin saw, but just for the fun of it. But this is a fatwood all ignited. As you can see, it's, <laughs> it's gone absolutely crazy. Uh, the next beer I'm having is, all right, this is Stout, Stout Ick, Russian something or another. It's from Longwood Brewery from Vancouver Island again, but there's no description. It's all just um, um, SOS <laughs> things on it, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on with that, but it's really good. It tastes like chocolate almost, and uh, yeah, so I'm just going to sit here by the fire now and have some beer. It's getting dark, so I'll have to put the headlight on pretty soon because you're not going to be able to see me. And I'll give you one last look at the fire. This is what uh, fatwood does um, when you start it with uh, small pieces and then uh, move it to uh, larger pieces and then the wood. That's <laughs> on Vancouver Island, that's how you start a fire. Okay, so the um Ribeye kind of fell apart. I'll show you. But I got it on the uh, on the grill, so we should be good to go. Oh, the smoke is just crazy. The wind is so bad right now. All right, that's gonna be good. All right, I'm tearing. <laughs> the, the smoke is just crazy but uh, yeah I'm gonna have that ribeye and uh, we're good to go okay so the steak is done I'll turn the old hat on here there she is we're gonna give her a shot wow that's really good All right, I'm gonna finish this off and talk to you guys later. Good morning. An awesome morning this morning. No rain, about two degrees or so. Slept really well. Uh, this is the area I slept in, of course. As you can see, it's the X-Ped uh, double size <clears throat> um, blow-up mattress, uh, three season sleeping bag with a wool blanket, which kind of makes it somewhat into a four season. And then of course I use my backpack and my two jackets as pillows. Forgot my pillow, so um, on the side I have the Grail. I have the uh, SKS sitting right there, and I was just doing some firewood stuff. But usually my knife is sitting right there, right beside the bed, just in case the critter comes in at night and uh, I need to do something or another. I have uh, been processing some wood this morning, so we got all the wood going on there. I got some cheat paper if I decide to use it, which I decided not to. And over here we got the, the lay. Although the coals are still warm, I could make a fire probably with them, but got the lay and I got uh, some shavings. And uh, literally I just sat here and put shavings all in the ground as I was sitting there, just whittled some shavings and then uh, put them on there. And then over here we have some uh, fat wood that's been um, scraped with my knife and uh, this is the piece right here as you can see it's nice and shiny full of resin and uh, we're gonna light that and get the uh, the fire going so I will light it up here. well maybe I'll light it down there so you guys can see let's grab the ferro rod <clears throat> trying to put you down <laughs> all right let's make sure that's on a nice level area get the knife Put this over here. 
no real fear of it going out because it is fat wood. There we go. And of course the, uh, <clears throat> Oop, there we go. Sorry about that guys, my GoPro battery decided to go. Okay, so we got the fat wood going and we're just gonna put some sticks on thusly. And that's that. All right, get this fire going and maybe I'll have some coffee. All right, just put some wood on the fire. Got some nice big pieces now, so it'll last a little bit. So I'm gonna be here till probably two o'clock or so. Wife's doing uh, a modeling thing actually. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have some breakfast or whatever. I think I'll have a, a smoky. Put this right there, I think. <laughs> yeah, these uh, expandable smoky things, you get them at the dollar store, believe it or not. So I, I got some. It's just handier to carry it with you. It doesn't weigh much. And uh, I mean, I got a stick right there that's been uh, sharpened for uh, smokies and stuff that I used last time. But every once in a while, I change it up a little bit. And uh, got the coffee on. I didn't bring any filters. I really, I really dropped the ball. I didn't bring uh, coffee filters. Didn't bring a pillow. Didn't bring a winter hat. A um, couple things <laughs> I forgot to bring. But um, anyway, I've made do, and um, no big deal. But uh, as I'm doing the cowboy coffee thing, it's just starting to boil now. I let it boil for about a minute, and uh, all the coffee grounds will go to the bottom as soon as I put some cold water on there uh, in the in the coffee itself. Then I'll have some uh, coffee. I brought some hot chocolate, so I'll have a mocha and I'll have a smoky. Okay, so in here, um, I put some cold water and waited a few seconds and then poured most of the coffee. You can see there's still some in there. There's grounds in there. Most of the coffee in here. And then put two of these and some of this in there, little baby marshmallows, as you can see. And there's the cup of coffee, ready to be drank. By the stream, I think. Life does not get any better than this. Hey, did you guys see this tree right here? Right there? That was not down last time I was here. That's a pretty big alder. Snapped right in half. Probably 30 or 40 feet long. Goes all the way to the end over there. And it's there. And my bivouac is there. <laughs> it actually turned out pretty good, eh? I uh, rebuilt the whole thing and uh, it's just like it was before. I'm drying out the uh, little mat that I have beside the place where I sleep. So when I turn around and put my uh, shoes on, I can put my socks on this, it doesn't get wet. But yeah, I think it turned out pretty good. Got to do a bit of a rebuild this summer, but uh, then we're good to go. You'll notice that I am dismantling the uh, fire uh, reflector. Uh, I'm going to be putting something else there, I think, next time I'm here. But I'm, gonna, I'm slowly putting it in the fire. But uh, yeah, I'm getting rid of that. So if you guys are wondering why this is slowly becoming smaller, that's the reason. All right, I'm going to have my coffee. Heading back, guys. Get ice on here, so it looks like it went to zero last night, not two. There's the old truck. Yeah, lots of ice on the water. Well, that's about it, eh, guys? Nice, quick, 
overnighter just to have some fun. A couple of beer and some sausages and some, uh, some steak. And uh, yeah, I guess heading home and clean up all my gear and call it a day. You guys take care and thank you for watching Vancouver Island Bushcraft. And feel free to sub, like, and share. And I'll talk to you next time.